According to TV star Lee Majors, people used to refer to him and ex-wife Farrah Fawcett as the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie of their time. And like that more recent celebrity pairing, the marriage between Lee and Farrah didn't work out. Join Facts First as Lee Majors confirms the sad reason for his divorce from Farrah Fawcett. Today, Lee Majors is an actor most fondly remembered for his work on the seminal action series The Six Million Dollar Man. At the time the series came onto the air, Lee had already found a modicum of success on TV, but his work on this series rocketed him into the stratosphere. Given how much the show ended up meaning for Lee's career, it may surprise many fans to learn that the actor was initially hesitant to play the part. When Lee expressed his distaste for the concept of The Six Million Dollar Man, his words didn't fall on deaf ears. The concept of the show was tweaked considerably thanks to Lee's creative input. There were a few stipulations that Lee had when it came to joining the cast. For one thing, Lee didn't like how much emphasis was being put on the main character's bionic abilities. At the time Lee was offered the part, the show was going by the working title, Cyborg. That lack of humanity wasn't appealing to him. He requested the character be more human, and the show's name was changed to The Six Million Dollar Man. The title and the titular character's lack of humanity weren't the only problems Lee Majors had with the original concept. The show was largely influenced by the 1960s Batman series, which was incredibly campy. Lee was hesitant to join a series with a similarly campy tone, but he was promised that the show would be a good deal more serious than its comic book predecessor. Before the series proper came on air, The Six Million Dollar Man got its start via a pair of made-for-TV features. The second of these included a theme song performed by Dusty Springfield. The Six Million Dollar Man was a huge success. The Dusty Springfield theme song, recorded for The Six Million Dollar Man, was similar in tone to the opening credit songs being used in James Bond features. This was another aspect of the show that Lee Majors found a little cheesy. Thankfully, after the two made-for-TV features were successful enough to warrant a series, Lee was able to convince those involved to get rid of the cheesy theme song. Another stipulation he had was that he didn't want the show to feature bad guys dying. Instead, he simply beats them up. The Six Million Dollar Man became a major success, and it was obvious Lee deserved a fair amount of the credit. Not only was Lee the perfect actor to portray the titular character, but the creative control he had in regards to the show's concept paid off immensely. Without his creative input, the show arguably wouldn't have struck a chord with audiences in the way it did. Two years into the show's five-season run, Majors came up with another stipulation. He thought it was time to shake things up. His character had yet to have a love interest on the show, and Lee thought this was a shame. An actress named Lindsay Wagner was hired onto the series to play a new romantic interest. Lindsay was hired in 1975. Then, in a special two-part episode, her character was killed off. Her character's death made fans so upset it eventually had to be undone. Her character was brought back to life and given her own spin-off. That was called The Bionic Woman. Though it didn't last as long as The Six Million Dollar Man, it was a minor success, lasting two seasons from 1976 to 78. Why The Six Million Dollar Man Ended The Six Million Dollar Man aired from 1974 to 78, though the first made-for-TV feature based on the concept premiered in 1973. All in all, three made-for-TV features and five seasons of the show were produced. According to Lee Majors, he was surprised when the show was taken off the air. It was still incredibly successful, but the hefty budget made the studio feel as if producing more episodes wasn't feasible. They felt there were more than enough episodes to keep it on the air via syndication. Though Lee Majors wasn't expecting the show to end, he wasn't too upset about it. For five years, working on the series had eaten up the majority of his free time. This was made all the more cumbersome when you consider the fact that Lee had just married his second wife in 1973. During the years he was working on the show, he was also trying to make his new marriage work. The woman that Lee was married to over the course of The Six Million Dollar Man was Farrah Fawcett. When Lee and Farrah married, she wasn't a star in her own right but she was a model. When they got married, the intended arrangement was that Farrah would stay at home and prepare Lee's meals while Lee would continue his career as a TV star. Farrah could do her modeling work in her spare time, and it wouldn't interfere with how much time she got to spend with her husband. 
Even if Lee had to work long days due to his television commitments, Farah would still be available when he was done. But not long after the marriage started, Farah started becoming a major celebrity in her own right. In 1976, she was cast to play one of the leads on the hit series Charlie's Angels. Why Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett Got Divorced After Charlie's Angels became a big success, the dynamic of their marriage changed considerably. Now the two were barely able to see each other whatsoever. Lee wasn't upset at his wife for her newfound success. Instead, he was simply sad he was hardly able to see her anymore. Farrah felt the same way, but she was also incredibly grateful that she was becoming a star in her own right. When the $6 million man ended, Lee may have envisioned that he was finally going to spend more time with Farrah. But this didn't end up being the case. She was still busy. In fact, by the time of the $6 million man's cancellation, Farrah had grown to eclipse her husband in terms of fame. After Farrah announced that she and Lee Majors were separating, and before the divorce officially went through, the two stars spent a romantic day together in Atlanta, Georgia. The romantic getaway was part reunion, part farewell. But it shows there was truly no bad blood between the two performers once they decided to call it quits on their marriage. They even stayed the night together, which is something the majority of couples would have a hard time with when preparing for a divorce. After divorcing Farrah Fawcett, Lee Majors took a hiatus from the entertainment industry and traveled around the world. He said he was surprised to find out what a major impact his work on The Six Million Dollar Man had on people across the globe. Eventually, he returned to acting. At age 83, Lee still shows up in the media every once in a while. Sadly, Farrah passed away in June 2009. She was 62. Upon Farrah's passing, Lee had plenty of kind words to share about his ex-wife. Lee and Farrah both moved on. Besides Farrah Fawcett, Lee Majors has had three other wives, and Farrah had a couple of other serious relationships during her life. Prior to Farrah, Lee was married to a woman named Kathy Robinson from 1961 to 64. After that, Lee was married to a Playboy model named Karen Velez from 1988 to 94. Today, he's married to a much younger woman named Faith. Faith is over three decades younger than Lee, and the May-December romance turned plenty of heads when they married in 2002. But the fact that they're still married after two decades shows they still love each other. Though Farrah never remarried after divorcing Lee, she did have another serious romantic partner. She became romantically involved with movie star Ryan O'Neill. Aside from a brief separation in the late 90s due to Ryan's infidelity, the two remained together until Farrah's death. Before meeting Lee Majors, Farrah dated a football player named Greg Lott. Now it's time to hear from you. Which part of the story was most surprising to hear about? Let us know in the comments section below.